Mecca fans, welcome back to the Mecca banner, baby. We are freaking live in the wise words of Nicholas Hayflinger, who could not join us tonight, but he is here in spirit. Fellas, let's introduce ourselves. I will start. I am Bucci Main. You can catch me at Twitter, Ryan underscore Butchart. I'm going to roll it over to my man, Dobes. What's going on? What's going on, fellas? Happy to be here. Big weekend ahead. Uh, it's your boy, Dobes. You can find me on Twitter, SCDobes10. Henry. Uh, I was going to say, let's kick it to Hen. Yo, uh, at Henry Wind here on Twitter. Um, and apparently the the next TikTok star of our group. I don't know. So that's pretty tight. Butch, Butch uh, you got some competition. Bro. Yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a dancing teacher, so I may not get the views. But uh, uh, Hoove, let's throw it to you, bro. Uh, yeah, Hoove. Uh, we're back. Uh, disappointing showing from the lads from the States. But, you know, we bounce. We bounce. We learn. Um, at Young Yid. Oh, God, I'm keep it going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Wings here. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at LCW21. Stoked to uh, to talk about the, the round of eight and, uh, and what's to come there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that leads us right into our first segment, Mecca fans. We got, the, we got the Elite Eight, as we call it here, but the quarterfinals of the World Cup. And we've got some freaking tasty matchups. Yeah, we do. And I think... I think there's no better way to start this off than talking about Argentina versus the Netherlands. It's going to be hot. It's going to be a good one. Fellas, this is, to me, this is like, this is very, very hard to call who, who can win. Cause I think both teams have, it's like a 50, 50 coin flip Yeah. in terms of like quality of like players on each team. But obviously one of them has the goat. One of them does not. Yeah. Yeah, right. that's there's the thing. A, I there's a paper favorite winner here. Like, yeah, hundred percent. I also think it's gonna be like a, a tactical game. Like, yeah. I don't know. I guess like if we want to dive into it, the so the Netherlands played the United States, and obviously we were crushed that the U.S. lost. Um, but like I wasn't super impressed with the Netherlands. They like did not possess not the ball all. very well. They were clinical on three chances, which like you know good for them. I just like I don't see Argentina giving up those same chances like the u.s did i just don't see them doing it and i see them creating 15 times as many chances as as the states yeah we i think so too. Well, there were a couple good opportunities which in the football that we hope for out of those kids it's like all right you gotta put a couple of those away yeah they the argentina will <laughs> yeah yeah i, I mean and i love the netherlands but i think also like their keeper is brutal like he is the worst part of their team and so like giant he's a huge yeah (laughs) huge but like Messi is better than that you know like he's just (laughs) that guy uh Uh, so like I don't know I think it's going to be a dog fight but I don't know I think Argentina is going to pull away I think this it's so interesting because I think you're kind of right hand to where this is going to be it's going to be a tactical game because like even if you look at the U.S. game like historically when you see the U.S plays the Netherlands on paper, we've always expected that the Netherlands would dominate the ball. Like, I just I just pulled up the possession stats of the whole game. Like, the U.S. had the ball 58% of the time. Jeez. And so it was just more of Netherlands, when they had those three chances, they were absolutely clinical. And maybe it was some bad marking, but it was literally three chances, and they buried them. I think it's kind of like we're saying, the uh, Oda Mendy, and it'll probably be Romero, I'm guessing, is a lot different than Tim Ream and Walker Zimmerman. Yeah, no disrespect so, to Tim Ream, though. You know. Yeah, so I don't think that they will get – yeah, absolutely no disrespect to Tim Ream, the, uh, the 35-year-old GOAT. Um, I think that they won't – Netherlands won't get as many clear-cut chances. And like we're saying, I think that Argentina, just with the quality they have going forward, their midfield, they're going to dominate the ball, and they're going to create those quality chances. Like, if they can get Messi free, I'm very interested to see who Argentina goes with their front, their front two. Because it's mm-hmm. rotated this tournament, I definitely think that's going to be a big factor in deciding this game. Yeah, Butch, who do you who do you put up there? Like, I know obviously, like you know, you're the coach of the group, but like, I know that you do pay attention to Argentina quite a bit. So, like, what are you rolling with in your front three? I guess. Yeah, I think um, I don't know. I think based on what I've watched the last few games, I think you have to start Alvarez. I think he have like, to. Yeah, Absolutely you know what I mean. To. Like, he's got two goals in, in the two games he started. 
he's got to be a top three or four name on the team sheet now. Like you just got to, you got to play him and you got to play him. You got to play him in a, in a way to where like you can get him space in and around the box because he's a, to me, he's a goal box. Pre- he reminds me a lot of Sergio Aguero. Same. Same. He reminds me a lot of Aguero. He's like a goal box predator and you have to put players around him that are going to draw defenders towards those players to free Alvarez up for space. And I think the, the two guys that are going to do it are going to be Messi and Di Maria. I think Ooh. Di Maria is the other guy. Cause like right now, Lataro, he looks shaky, you know, like you can't hit water falling out of a boat. Bro. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, we talked him up. So my, I picked him as my golden boot and he just, he's been flopping this whole tournament, man. He just, mm-hmm. he doesn't look confident. Um, I think in my opinion, though, before I turn it to Winks, my key player for this game is the man that's on my back, my background screen, Rodrigo DePaul. This dude, dude, he is a baller. He's a, he's a machine. I think if he, there's actually, there were some injury concerns this week and it got cleared, I guess today or this morning that he is going to start. If he didn't play in this game, I'm, I'm scared. Argentina loses the game. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's that crucial. I obviously Messi is Messi's the guy. Messi's the key player. I think Rodrigo's the Paul. Rodrigo the Paul is the underrated gem that kind of like, you know, he's like the the oil in the machine to me. Yeah, it keeps it going. Mm-hmm. Wings, yeah. Wings. Yeah, I think that uh, I I don't I don't really see Netherlands tactically changing a whole lot from from what they did against us. I think that they're probably going to end up being a little more direct and kind of let Argentina come forward with the ball a little more. And then when they do counter again, be, be more direct with the ball and probably try and, you know, defensively funnel the ball away from Messi as much as they can. Obviously we know he, he can float to really anywhere on the field, which is, you know, such a dangerous part of the Argentina side, but I I see them funneling the ball away from Messi being more direct and attacking the outsides more versus with us they seem to you know attack our center backs quite a bit um throughout the 90 minutes so i i could see them them focusing more on the counter this game should they end up changing you know a ton of stuff tactically but Dude, if you told me that the united states had 58 percent of possession against the netherlands like two months ago yeah bro I would have you're crazy say you're crazy you. yeah uh, no i don't know obscene and i could yeah. and, and i predict argentina to have even more than than 58 percent. i think that obviously gonna... some talented guys but i think that they're gonna they're gonna be very direct on the counter and yeah. Winks, i think you're right we've seen romero get caught out and out of position yeah. and i see him do it at spurs like he loves taking the ball up so like yeah. they're gonna be looking direct for sure because he's gonna be free uh, yeah. if they got the ball but i think it's just like the U.S., like let's – we had possession, but we also had chances. We just didn't convert. Like I forget who it was in like the 77th minute where we were like in on goal. It was 2-2. Like had the, had the chance to to like literally tie the game and just we didn't get through. But it's like they're back three for the Netherlands. Like obviously, I mean, I'm assuming it'll probably be Timber, Akai, and then Virgil. Like they're still vulnerable. Like that's three great names, but they're definitely vulnerable to where yeah. – the quality of Argentina, like at least in my opinion, I can see like a 2-1, 3-1 game. I just think the quality that Argentina has going forward, I just think it's going to be too much, especially with the amount of possession that we're, we're kind of saying they're going yeah. to have. Yeah. So let's real quick, let's all five of us give our winner. I'm going Argentina. I'm going to Argentina and Pens. Wow. Yeah. I'm going Argentina 2-1. Well, I don't need that kind of afternoon tomorrow, Head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that. I'm I'm going I'm going two one two one Argentina or three one, uh, but I also wouldn't be surprised if the Netherlands won. Okay, I yeah. think that the Netherlands are going to have to score early if they want a chance to beat this team. So I I don't know that they do. I'm going to say two zero Argentina. Love it. I could see I could see a clean sheet. Yeah, I think Winks is right. I could see a clean sheet. Yeah, from Argentina, I could. I don't know. Same. Yeah. Um, Let's head over to game number two tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, Friday, December 9th at 9 a.m. our time, central time here in the States. We got Brazil, Croatia. Such a teacher, bro. Like, you're so, like, tomorrow, <laughs> December 9th. I'm surprised. I'm surprised yeah, I still, raise your hand, bro. Yeah, yeah. Your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I'm surprised I still have a voice today. The, uh, the yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Um, 
So Brazil, Croatia, um, obviously a lot of stars on show here. Uh, you know what I mean? You got some, if you got Kovacic, you got Modric, Perisic, guys from Croatia, and then you've got all the superstars of Brazil. There's a lot of great players in this game. Um, I personally think it's going to be closer than what people are predicting. I'm, I'm yeah. reading a bunch of I'm reading a bunch of shit on TikTok and stuff, and it's like, oh, 3-0 Brazil, 4-1. I'm like, this is not Korea. Yeah. No. I'm no. sorry, you're not playing South Korea here. So, yeah. what are we What are we thinking? Who wants to lead us off here on this one? I'm happy to. I I dis or I agree with you, and I disagree with you because if we look at Croatia's group stage games, they they spanked Canada 4-1. Um, which was which was a good win all around, but then they tied a miserable Belgium side zero yeah. zero. Couldn't put a goal past them, and then tied Japan one to one. So after we saw the last game that Brazil had and the real offensive power and just command of the field that that team has all the way around, I I don't think that I think that Croatia is going to be a little timid coming into this, and I could see them getting getting one just getting one or two just as early as they did last game okay. i i do think it's going to be tighter i think croatia is not south korea and they've got a stronger defense in general like you know collectively they've given up they gave up two goals through the group stage you know you can do numbers but it's you're right about brazil like they haven't played a brazil yet Dude, yeah. exactly. They haven't played a Brazil yet. The in a, in like a World Cup sense, you grow into these matches. So the more you play, the more comfortable you obviously watch them become. And it's not like they were ever uncomfortable. So I think it's going to be tough for Croatia to score goals, but harder than it is for Brazil. Like it, I, it could be two one, it could be two zero. I do think Brazil wins, but yeah, I, I do think it's tighter. But Croatia just can't handle that kind of that kind of offense, man. Yeah, I I think. I think Brazil, to be honest with you, I think Brazil is going to coast in this one. And the reason that I say that is like, obviously the last game, the offense is going to get all of the praise, you know, obviously like you see the dances behind Dobes there. Like you see all the videos of the all the goals. Um, but like the unsung hero of that entire game was Brazil's defense and not just the back four, but like, I mean, you were watching like Richarlison the moment that he lost the ball like zooming back 15 yards to go put in a tackle. Like, I mean, that's better than what I thought you were going to say. You know, yeah. Yeah. No, like, I mean, <laughs> just like the, the counter press, like Allison came up with some massive saves, which went like unnoticed really, or like on first about. time he's had to make saves all tournament. Yeah. Like he made it. Yeah. He four big ones. Like, yeah. Literally made his first save of the tournament that game. But I just think that like, when I look at Croatia's lineup, Yes, it is true they have Kovacic, and yes, it is true they have Modric, but, like, Perisic is, like, your only attacking option, truthfully, and, like, even at 34 or whatever he is, 33, like, his legs are getting heavy, and I just don't think he has what it takes to, like, beat a Brazilian back line. Um, and I think something else that'll be cool is it'll be awesome watching Gavardial for Croatia because for a lot of us, he's been like a massive standout player. And now he gets the opportunity to go against potentially the best attacking team of the tournament. So this could be a big day for his stock, but I just think Brazil dominate this game. I'm I'm in agreement there. I, I don't necessarily, I kind of agree with Butch to where I think it's going to be closer than we think. But since the start of this tournament, I've just absolutely fallen in love with this Brazilian team. I mean, I grew up with the Joe Benito watching Ronaldinho, all those guys, Samba, all those guys together, back of the bus, dancing. Uh, the delinquents, and, a bunch yeah. of total degenerates you <laughs> yeah, come to find abs- out in 2022. Abs- yeah, exactly. A, b- a bunch of degens. But at the same time, like, I think that's one of the reasons I've, like, fallen in love with this team. It's just you see how much they, like, they love playing together. They see how much that, like – they just enjoy their football. It's like, it's literally, it's like an art form to them. And we saw that on display with some of those beautiful goals in that, in that last game. But at the same time, I think like this game, it might be won and lost in the midfield, because if we look mm-hmm. at Croatia's best like piece, it's like Kovacic, it's Brozovic and, and Modric versus like Casemiro, Neymar and, and whoever, I mean, I'm assuming it'll be people, Paqueta, if I said that right again for Brazil, but like, Neymar is kind of a defensive liability. It kind of depends on, you know, if if Croatia can exploit that. I mean, then, then again, you have probably the best number six in the world. You guys can give me shit if you want. And Casemiro just sitting there behind him. 
But I think this game is going to be won and lost in the midfield. I think obviously if Brazil can get forward, they're going to score. I just yeah. think that there's too much quality. Like Richie's in good, Richie's in good form. And we, we've seen Vinicius, like Neymar still just coming back from injury, like another game back to where I guarantee you he balls. I think yeah. it's going to be like a three or four one. Um, but at the same time, like, I think it's going to be one and lost in the midfield for sure. Yeah. I mean, Neymar looks so good coming it, back. Like, it's, it's so stupid. This, bro, he's been hurt down and bad. They thought he was going to miss the whole my, thing. My opinion, he's come the on, most stupid. underrated player of all time. He's bro, the most underrated player of all time. I was literally watching videos of him earlier today, and I was like, he's by far the best Brazilian to ever play. But I was like, he's damn near like. He's up there. Like I don't. It's, I don't know what take incredible. I want to make right now. But it's like, incredible. he's way up there. Yeah, he's yeah. so good. So yeah. good. Um, I I just I have a weird feeling in my stomach about this game. I don't know why. You know what I mean? Like I just feel like it's gonna be so closer, so much closer than people think. Um, like I I don't know. I could genuinely see this going to extra time. I'm really? telling you, it's just a feeling I have. I just. I think Dobes kind of hits it. I think Croatia's midfield is stronger. I think their midfield is – it is stronger in terms of, like, they've got – in my opinion, Brozovic is one of the most underrated midfielders of this generation. He's a baller. He's That underrated. bomb tattoo on his neck is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> terrifying. Yeah, it is. And, and, you know, you know like, that guy loves a tackle. And that's he how he it. plays, man. Yeah, yeah, that's exact, yeah, exact yeah. representation. It's incredible. Um, obviously, Luka Modric – one of the best ever. Um, and then Kovacic is, is freaking unbelievably good on the ball. Great, great dribbler, great acceleration, gets out of pressure very well. I don't know, man. I just feel like it's going to be closer than people think. I could see it going extra time. I could, I could just, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to be different because I have that feeling in my stomach. Yeah. These are, this is the exact same team, the exact same team that went to the world cup final four years ago. Yeah. And it's, so these these guys know how to fight, bro. They, yeah, do, I do here. think though, it's like if it gets that extra time, it's like we saw last game, like Modric had to come out of the game, like Kovacic had to come out of the game. And if that's the case, it goes to extra time. I am taking Brazil's bench 10 mm-hmm. times yeah. out of 10 over <laughs> yeah. anybody's in the world, probably. Yeah, that that's a great point. So, yeah. knowing that, I the betting degenerate in me wants to talk about the opposite <laughs> quick. So just just Googled it, and currently Brazil are minus 275 favorites to win. Over two and a half goals is minus 125. Wow. Um, what do we what do we think? I know we've had kind of a bad overall run of luck with betting overs, but dude, this is gonna be a 2-0 game and we're all gonna take the over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gonna gonna lose, that's bro. exactly what's gonna happen. I'm I'm more curious on the over I so I think Henry What's made a the good team point. total. I I'd have to look at that. I can I can check that in a little bit. But knowing, hearing Butch talk about how he's sneakily like worried about Croatia, you know, doing something here, but also hearing Hen talk about the defensive side of Brazil and how truly strong they all are collectively. I could I could you can just see it both ways here so much. Um, but obviously the books are favoring the over in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, yeah, I mean, you... I, 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 I think it's a, it's a whole different story if Brazil score early. Like, you just think, like, I don't know, but before the round of sixteen, we talked about Croatia, Japan, and like the main thing that we talked about was how disciplined both teams were. And like, I made the point on that that like, if there was one team that could go toe to toe with the discipline of Japan, it was Croatia. And like, a tie game favors them as they go into that. But like, you put one past them, they have no choice but to chase the game. Yeah. And like, I, I think the other thing that like we have to take in consideration is like all the offensive talent is there for Brazil, but they also get fouled a fuck ton. And like you get a guy on a yellow, he starts backing off of tackles. Like, I mean, there's just so many elements to it that like, I don't even care what the line is. I think Brazil just like comfortably go through and the team total is Brazil over one and a half, by the way. But I think Ooh. like, Ooh. yeah, um, I, I think yeah. that they just, I think Brazil cruises. So I think that's the that's the lock. Brazil team total. <laughs> don't say the L word, bro. Yeah, we can't. We <laughs> definitely don't the know. Andy anything. Hoover special. The young is <laughs> <Yeah>. special. <laughs> All right. Let's... I'm also a big fan of this. Sorry, last one. I'm just I'm just also a big fan of the Brazil first half money line. 
I, those are tasty. Those uh, have been good. We, 117. I oh. I think that's cheap. I even I still think that minus 275 is even a little cheap for Brazil going mm-hmm. into this too. I think they could easily be 325. But okay, let's move on. Dude, we'll you, see. Guys are, you guys are speaking a foreign language to me right yeah, now. Yeah, just like it's absolutely no idea. Um, so let's just go quick one by one so we can move along. Uh, Dobes, who's your winner here? Brazil? Brazil. Brazil. All right. Brazil. Ooh. Yeah, Brazil 2 Brazil. Yeah, I'm going Brazil 3 0. I like that. I'm going to go 2 1 Brazil. I think it's, I think it's a one goal game. I'm going to go 2 1. Um, all right. Now we got the juiciest matchup. So juicy. Yes, you make your mouth water, baby. Hey, so yo, England chill with that, bro. France. Chill with that. Oh. England against France. Holy fellas. Wait, Tomorrow, bro. I feel French. Dude. <laughs> Do you feel French on Saturday, too? Because that's when the game is, bro. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That one. <laughs> Jesus. I only feel French one day out of the year, and it's it's not often. <laughs> so, man, there's so – guys, there's so much we can dissect as, yeah. as footballers and as former players and lovers of the game. Like, there's so much stuff we can dissect about this matchup. So, like – who wants to lead us off here, man? Like, who wants to lead us off with? I think, th- I think the thing we should talk about right now, and I think Dobe should do it, is Kyle Walker versus Mbappe. Yeah, that was that was exactly what I was gonna say. No, what are your thoughts? Or Maguire versus Giroud? Yeah. <laughs> Why aren't we not talking about that? <laughs> well, Maguire, Maguire is Maldini. Um, <laughs> I, I'm go. I, this is. I'm so excited to to watch Kyle Walker and and Mbappe go at it. I just think that the pace that's on display, just that's going to be on that, on the right side for, on the right side for, uh, for England, the left side for France. What's so funny is that Southgate and all these guys have talked about how they've had this Mbappe plan for years that they've been planning on like bringing to the table right now. I truthfully think that Mbappe is just too good that he's going to get the best of Kyle Walker because I don't necessarily think there's a defender in the world that can contain him for 90 minutes. Like he's going to get Aaron Wambasaka, baby. Aaron Wambasaka. All right, that's I, the biggest cap I've ever heard. I, <laughs> what I, is do, I do think where England can succeed is based off the fact that Mbappe plays zero defense. And if Kyle Walker has the ability to get forward, like Mbappe is not going to track him back and, and it's going to, it's going to leave them exposed in terms of going what did, forward. What did go Mike ahead. Tyson say when you had, when everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face? It, it's, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. Prime, it's, prime example. Exactly. I, I think that Mbappe, as we know, he's got an ego. He doesn't like to defend. I mean, we may see something different just because it's a world cup quarterfinal, but I do think Mbappe will get his chances just because arguably he's the best player in the world this, at this moment um, between him and Messi, at least in my opinion. But I do think Kyle Walker with his pace can exploit that that French left side very easily. Well, I guess I'm curious, like what we've seen from England in this tournament, which is not natural for England, but they've been playing a back four. Do you think we they go to like a back three or back five, however you want to phrase it, and like – maybe drop like Saka to like a right wing back maybe, or like, how do you think that think even they can with, with France's front three, I don't think that going to a back three is smart. If they go to a back five, they've got to be playing for PK. Who's, who's your back three then? You know, like well, the, the thing is that, well, that's and... what's interesting. So like, I'm looking at the lineups right now and like injured and suspended players, you have John stones, who's doubtful because of a hamstring. And then you have Declan rice, who's doubtful because of illness. And it's like, and that kind ben of Ben White go home. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like yeah. that's a that's a big loss at this. So point. you're look you're right. looking at Eric Dyer, essentially, which we all hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs> you know, it's just like he's been I'm worse. He's been <laughs> worse. But yeah, like I mean, I guess if you keep the back four, that's fine. I just I don't know. I think that that matchup is is pretty large. Um yeah, I don't know. Mbappe is who he is, but I, I just think like I don't know. I might have a completely different take here, but I think England actually nabbed the the win in this one, um, which could be like a super hot take. Uh, yeah, throw I don't, that I don't think so. I, don't, I don't think so at all. I just, uh, think, I don't think so. I at just all. think this, this game is going to be hard for me to bet. I, I wish it. To. I wish it wasn't, but I, I'm in agreement <laughs> with Hen. Not necessarily that England will win, but I just think that England is dangerous going forward. Yeah, and like I just. 
I don't know. I watched France's back line. Okay, so here are the two things. I watched France's back line, and I watched Hugo Lloris. And, like, Hugo Lloris is just not that guy. Scary. He's just he's not. scary right now. Um, whoever he's they gonna played, stop. He's going to stop your shots. He's not yeah. going to clear the ball well. He's he's whoever they played he's last game. Say he's good for one mistake a game. Yeah. 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 So it was 100%. like – you trust Harry Kane to know that and follow up everything or like take shots from ridiculous angles. But like, I don't know. I, I just think that like, I'm not, I promise I'm not just being like a fanboy right now, but I think if you throw Rashford out on that right hand side and make Theo Hernandez, like defend him one-on-one, I do think that Rashford gets the best of that. And if Harry Hooked. Kane, like if, yeah, if like, if Harry Kane drops in and plays that like long diagonal ball or just like through, I think Rashford's in there and like, He's already comfortable with like playing against Lori. He's like, I don't know. I just think that like you know, that's feeling. also that's also assuming Southgate plays the right. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Rat the France's biggest weaknesses are their two but wing backs like absolutely Benjamin Pavard and I. I'll give credit to Hernandez because I think he's a dog, but yeah. I do think you're right in the dog. sense of against against a pacey Rashford or you know, I you know I'll take Saka too. Like I I get it. He's he's been really solid. It's it's a toss up from an England perspective. I think who to pick, even though like you know, you guys know who you'd take. But those are definitely the weakest positions, and mm. they're gonna hopefully, or you would think that Southgate wants to exploit that. But again, he's terrorism football. So yeah, you just had am, never know. I am so excited, genuinely, as like a former center midfielder converted converted center back, like for this midfield battle of yep. i mean obviously i mean kind of doesn't really necessarily matter who southgate goes with at least in my opinion i mean like last like who did he go with last week it was henderson jude and declan who are all three very similar yeah. players yeah obviously if declan can't go i don't see him playing calvin phillips so he may actually have to play a true 10 but like the combination of like tukamini or tuk tuk however you say it tukamini i think that's right rab rabio <laughs> many bro. many Chew a many. Chew a many. Yeah, 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 sure, bro. Let me see. T C H O U A M E. Vow, 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 vow. Fuck off. Uh, but to to I'm saying to Kamini. Uh Rabio, Rabio and Griezmann, but then like you combine that with what'll probably be, I'm assuming, if if uh Declan's out, like Jude, Henderson, and then I don't think he goes mount, but whoever plays the 10, like those I are, think he does be, go mount. You think? Yeah, but and those, I also yes. think he goes Calvin Phillips. Those I don't think arguably, he, I don't think those Calvin arguably Phillips has more the than... two best center midfields in the tournament, at least in my opinion, like yeah. on paper, to where that is going to be just incredible to watch. Yeah, it'll be good. Yeah, Butchie, what are your thoughts? Like, I know, I know, like, I forgot if it was before the round of sixteen or if it was like earlier on. You talked about Griezmann, and he's been like lighting it up as like a true number ten, like playing as one of the midfield three. What are your thoughts on him yeah. going into this game? I think I think he's the difference. I think I think I'm choosing France to win this game because of Antoine Griezmann. I think Griezmann will be the guy. If you've watched their games, he's everywhere, guys. Everywhere, guys. Like everywhere, he, he's dropping back to get the ball like past half, and he's just dicing people on the dribble and spraying balls all around like Paul Scholes. <laughs> like like, dude, it's don't, don't don't do that. He said just just don't <laughs> like just don't, just don't do that. Yeah, that was over exaggerated, but you know what I mean. Um, no, he looks he looks a whole, and what I love is he looks so different for France. I think this is what Griezmann like. This is who he is, and it sucks that he we don't see this at Atletico Madrid because he plays for a coach that just will not let him do it. Same yeah. thing with Jao, dude. He looked amazing last game, yeah. and he was yeah. so fun to watch. Yeah. Same situation. I you know I think Griezmann's the difference, and I think he I think he's going to unlock the English back line. He's going to, he's going to hit him with balls through He's going to hit him balls over the top. He's also very, very dangerous on his set piece deliveries. Oh yeah. They are 100%. dangerous. Yeah. And I just, I just think he makes that difference, man. Um, I definitely think we should talk about Giroud because mm -hmm. I think Giroud is going to cause some problems. I genuinely think he's going to cause problems. Um, especially if John stones is, is out. Yeah, we got Harry Maguire and Eric Dyer. Who I love you, brother, but Eric Dyer ain't it, my guy. Hey, I'm I'm telling you that it doesn't matter what center back you pull from the English pool; they're all pretty mid, right? Yeah, like, like you know, we're really not picking to like the the crop of the litter. And for us to be sitting here talking about Harry Maguire being Maldini with England, 
is insane because I'm picking Eric Dyer to play over him at Spurs every day of the week. Yeah. Like that's that's an easy pick for me. Yeah. But I do think in a in a weird sense, and we said this kind of about like Walker Zimmerman and Kane, but we never really saw any of that come to fruition. But I think I think McGuire in the form he's in matches up pretty well with Drew. Like he's not a super quick guy, he's not the explosive guy that we kind of used to know. He is a target guy, he's gonna get the balls in the air. But Harry Maguire's been physical, he's been winning battles. I think that's a I think that's a good matchup. To, to 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 watch too. I don't, I don't know. I, you all provide really good points here, but I'm I'm with you on Griezmann. Griezmann and Mbappe are going to be the they're going to be watched, the guys. Uh, I watched, on Dembele, brother. Yeah, I think he's on the other side. But I watched a I watched an interview today. I'm not sure when it was from, um, but it was Virgil and, and Gary Neville. And Gary asked him who the the one striker that he hated to play against, and he said Olivier Giroud. Yeah. He said he just he said that no matter where he is, he just always finds a way to score. Mm-hmm. It's like you can have your eyes on him, but no matter what, the ball finds him and he finds a way to score. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I read um a stat this morning that I found to be pretty interesting. It's the top ten players of like chances created this World Cup. Uh France have the top four, or excuse me, four of the top <laughs> That's ten. Disgusting. Uh Griezmann is at 15 chances created, and the next closest is Messi at 13. So it's like it puts you into perspective how like dominant. Griezmann's been um in that 10 role um but you know Butchie you never know Southgate could throw like a a very Southgate move and play a back five and put Kyle as one of the center backs and put uh your boy Trent as a right wing back and we could watch Trent go up against Mbappe that would be a that would be a a show (laughs) for the entire Mecca we would love that bro if if Gareth Southgate plays Trent against Kylian Mbappe he should be coaching. He, he should be coaching freshman level high school ball. That clown. <laughs> There's no shot, dude. He, dude. If he does that, guys, I will blow the. Check. <laughs> yeah. I will blow the check. I, and you know I love Trent, but that would be the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. That's elementary. That. Elementary. 100. No percent every, Everyone who looks at playing Liverpool, they're like, all right, well, one corner of the field is going to be pretty open. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty tasty. Here we go. <laughs> uh winksy what are your thoughts man i think i think you guys touched touched on a lot of it i think like i said before it's going to come down to who southgate chooses to play i i think that while mcguire has been in prime form for england lately i think that you know their their front three of Giroud, mbappe and dembele are going to be going to be too much too much for england england's got a ton of class players and i know we we've talked about it over the last couple days in the Mecca about, you know, how this England team would beat the golden generation of England. But I don't think that that takes away at all from, from what France's front three are going to be able to do. And then with Griezmann sitting behind them, you know, like we talked about him creating so much, I think that, I think that France takes it. I think it'll be close. I think it'll be closer than, than what you were saying that the Croatia, um, yeah. the Croatia game was going to be, I, I think two, one France here though. Uh, Though you, someone Greece said his name. Someone said him in Dembele, and like, that's probably France's plan. Like yeah. they would rather him take Luke Shaw on than Mbappe take him than well, Kyle Walker on. Hundred percent, yes. And Mbappe is going to cut in every single time. Well, because you think about it, you have Luke Shaw, and then being backed up by Harry Maguire. That's like yeah. that's his defensive cover. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, good call. Um, Dobes, what's your prediction here? <laughs> I am. I'm taking England. Um, I think I'm going to go two one. I know that there's all this the Southgate. If he picks the right lineup, I think Southgate's one of those to where it's tough because I read some today. It was like from 1968 to 2016, England had only won six knockout games. Wow! And since 2018 to 2022, they've won six knockout games. So wow. clearly, he's done something right for them. And I just think, obviously, it depends on the lineup. But I, I just think that the like depth wise, England matches up with France, like the players they can bring off the bench, no matter who starts. Like as much as I hate to trust Harry Maguire because I've never in my entire life trusted him for United. Like Clip it. I think I think this is like Clip a two 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 game that generally goes to, to extra time and maybe goes to pens and England wins on pe- pens because Pickford stands on his head. Like I could see something like that. But I'm England and just barely slightly. Who? Um, I don't know. Maybe this is definitely just bias, but I think France win. Um, it's 
it's their attack is nuts, dude. It's just like, you know, it's a Brazil situation to where you can score three goals and they can score four. Like, I don't think either team lets up like that many goals. Um, I think Harry Kane bags one, Mr. Inevitable. It's kind of just what he does. Or he assists, at least. The dude's been playing everywhere. But... Like, have you been watching the World Cup, man? Hasn't really been doing that. He hasn't really much. been doing that, but, uh, he's, you know. That. Sorry, he had, like, what, four assists prior to that? You're right. That's, that's a stupid <laughs> stat to track. Um, I'm going – I'm going – I'm going 2-1. I think this could go to extra time for sure. I think England are solid defensively for how weird that may sound. Um, I just think they I just think they overpower him up front. I don't know. I don't know how else to see it. That's fair. All right. Henry, you want to give your score here? Yeah, I'm going England and Pens. I think that it's going to be a close game, and then England's just going to, like, get, like, all of the story, like, away from, like, their Euro, missing their penalties, whatever. I think that they're going to win in pens, and that's what's going to happen. Saka buries the first one. And Rashford, yeah. like, seals it. Yeah. I'd love that. Um, I'm going to go 3-1 France. 3-1. <laughs> I think their attack is too strong. Yeah. Um, I also would love to see that as well. <laughs> yeah, I just... Regardless, it's going to be a sick game. It's, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be, nice. it's gonna be a really yeah. good game. Yeah. I'm, ja- I'm jacked up for this game. Yeah, I'm jacked up for this game. Um, last but not least, we have Portugal, Morocco. Um, we have a game where I think who, most... but she, but she, who did, who did Morocco beat? <laughs> yeah, who was it? We will get to that get later. Your, get, your, nah, get your, nah, ran we're, out of way. Get we're it, in it now. We will get to that what later. Happened? Please advise, please advise. Um, Morocco and Spain. So yes, Morocco upset Spain in penalty kicks. Um, but I think. The biggest storyline that we want to talk about as a group is the fact that Cristiano Ronaldo got benched and Portugal looked unbelievable, <laughs> man. Unreal. Unbelievable. They look sick. Yeah. So they look sick. The 21 year old kid that got picked over Cristiano starts and gets a hat trick and one assist in a World Cup round of 16. What the hell? A 9.8 rating on Fat Mob. That's gross. Like that is yeah, that, gross. I think I think that's the highest in the tournament. At least I'm pretty sure that's the highest. Oh, yeah. in the it has to be. Yeah. I, mean, I, has I saw to be. a tweet that was saying Benfica could net close to 330 million off of like six transfers in the last two years. Liverpool yeah, picked, guys, picked, Liverpool they picked the wrong out? striker. Liverpool well, it, signed the oh, wrong stop. striker. Stop. Well, <laughs> stop. I mean, it's nuts. It, <laughs> isn't it like Ederson? He was there. Darwin Nunez was there. Jao Felix was there. And now this guy is going to go for whatever, $100 million. Uh, It's gross. I didn't know who this dude was before Same. he started that game. I'm Same. completely <laughs> comfortable with admitting that. And then he comes in and bags three. And one of them was an asinine finish. The first one, the, <laughs> yeah, he, he just was. turned and just he was like, let's see what happens. Ripped it. Oh, yeah. my God. Was it, yeah, who was Who did they play? Uh, Switzerland? Yeah. Dan Summer was like, yo, <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he just did that. He just watched it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we put in six against Summer and then United was linked with him the next day. It's just like nuts. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, he's an embarrassment. Might as well bring him in. You know, it's pretty crazy. Um, but it'll be, a, it'll be, a, it'll be a tough game. I think uh, Portugal, obviously, like you just said, Butch, they looked unbelievable without Ronaldo. And quite honestly, like, I don't even want to spend too much time talking about Ronaldo. We've like talked about him so much. And now that he's not in the lineup, it's easy to just like move past it, but they literally looked so good all across the field. And I couldn't tell like on the final, like two, maybe three goals. If like Switzerland had just completely given up because like Rafael Leal came on and like on his third touch scored a goal. And like, it looked like summer just like kind of gave up on it. Like he didn't even try to go for it, but they were just so dominant. I said this in the Mecca, but that 6-1 game, I think for me, is like the standout performance of the World Cup so far. Like, I think that it was just completely different than Brazil, Korea, and obviously totally different in the cap that is Spain and them playing Costa Rica. <laughs> like, I think it's just totally different. I think that Portugal, that was nuts. That was one of Switzerland, the best. Switzerland is good. Yeah. Like, dude, it was, yeah. It was yeah. by no means like a blowout, blowover team. Switzerland, yeah. is, they they would have put it to most other like teams. Switzerland beat Cameroon, barely yeah. lost to Brazil on that Cassie goal, then beat Serbia. So that it's like they were a insane Serbia game. They mm-hmm. just weren't like a slouch coming into that game to where the, the Portugal performance was 
from start to finish was absolutely, I mean, I think we can put it a little bit to Ronaldo not being in there just because of the fluidity it looked like they had. But at the same time, like this Moroccan side that they're going to go up against is tough. Like is tough, man. And the way that they mm-hmm. played Spain, I think Spain had over 75% of possession, which obviously you expect yeah. out of a Spain team. But like they didn't have a ton of clear cut chances. Like, I mean, obviously, you know what, what ZX got. I absolutely loved Hakimi doing the the Sergio Ramos celebration yeah, on that pen. That was absolutely electric. Nuts. But I, I think the difference between like Spain and Portugal is Portugal going forward is just so much more dangerous that I think it, if they get a few chances, they're going to bury them. As much as I love Morocco, like I think this is another one where I can see Portugal cruising. Just way too much quality all over the field. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is kind of nuts. Like, you look at the the stats and they're there, but I still feel like Bruno Fernandez is getting like swept under the rug. Like he's flying under the radar. I'm like looking at like stop that. No, he's not. He's not flying under the radar. He's, dude, he's one of the best players for Portugal. He has been, but I'm like looking at like tweets and shit of like people's like a top eleven of the tournament, and they're like leaving out Bruno Fernandez altogether. And I'm like, he, he plays he, he he plays for the wrong club, or he'd be in there. City guy. He's the first name on the sheet, but you know. <laughs> Let me gag on this <laughs> mic real quick. <laughs> um, Winksy, what you got? Yeah, what are your thoughts, man? I I think this is going to be closer than people think. I really do. I think that you know we we look at we look at the games that Morocco's played up until this point. They've allowed one goal during open play, and it was an own goal, I believe, against Canada. They didn't allow a single goal to Spain in penalties. I think that that says a lot. I know that, uh, I know that, you know, Portugal played on real last game, but I think that Morocco's defense is going to shine again and that's going to keep it very close. I could see this game going to penalties as well. Um, but I don't know. I, th- I think that Morocco's defense has been the star here and I don't know how else to how else to put it yeah that's fair it's a it's definitely another brazil croatia situation where we're like you know we're talking about a team that plays pretty ridiculously locked down defense against a team that has just fire power up front and midfield ability i think you're right i think it's closer too but (laughs) I I I I i still think portugal win but I I think it's gonna be it's gonna be close. I think it's funny. Like everybody, we, seen, everybody saw Ramos, you know, do what he did last game, and whether he starts him or or Ronaldo next game, I think everybody's gonna still be riding high on that wave. And I think the main difference between this and the Croatia Brazil game is that the underdog is the team that plays lockdown defense, not the favorite. Yeah. Um, so you have to look at it from that perspective, and we'll see we'll see if. Uh, if I can say this right, first of all, but Yassine Bonu, Bonu, Bono, Bono, Bono. the goalie. So many vowels. Yes, sir. Bono. Uh, Where does he play? What clubs he play for? Sevilla? I don't even know. I think Sevilla. Um, yeah, yeah, he plays Sevilla. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Something like that. Uh, he, I, I think if he stands on his head again, in addition to, you know, Marco playing lockdown defense all the way around, um, Brazil, or excuse me, uh, Portugal does have an incredible offense, but I don't know. It's yeah, kind of nice to have like sad. a darling in the in the round of eight. Like it's nice to have like that underdog. You know, we thought it was going to be Japan, but like it's nice to see Morocco going. Shout out to Nick Hayflinger. You know, good shout. Give Nicky and give Nicky the credit. I guess. Yeah, dude. He's, he's not right about a lot of seats. Yeah, right he's wrong about a lot of seats. <laughs> He's not even here to defend himself, but dude, I uh, saw some, yeah, every other continent outside of Europe is just riding Morocco right now. Like yep. yeah. Mm-hmm. As they South should. America. As yeah. they should. Yeah. We 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 need those cats. We need them up. <laughs> yeah, we need it. Someone someone interviewed dude, these some of these stupid ass interviews. I did read about that Iranian guy that interviewed Tyler Adams with all those questions. I read a pretty long thread. There's no such thing as free media in Iran. So he was very much so not a journalist. He was <laughs> he was a state agent <laughs> over there to cause controversy 
in a prior to the a, game oh my god to, yeah so th- i thought that was really interesting and then something else i thought of the same thing it was an interview with a couple of the, the moroccan guys pre-game and someone said like are you are you guys playing this for the middle eastern countries and you know as the only you know african country even remotely close like are you, are you playing this for saudi arabia are you playing this for qatar and the guy goes no i'm playing this for morocco <laughs> like, no <laughs> like you know it was playing his day he's like i have no means nothing to me oh, no yeah that's, dude. that is the perfect answer it's i perfect. love like, it it's dude. exactly what i would have said too grow up that question. Yeah. grow up you can ride them that's fine but you cannot be asking if they're playing for no bro those guys can care less they're playing for casablanca those scenes were insane insane well let's give our predictions real quick um henry you go ahead and start yeah, Portugal wins. I'm I'm going to go 2-1. Late goal for Morocco though. Can't like consolation goal, not like a close game. Okay. I'm going 3-0. I was yeah, I don't think they score a goal, man. There's just they just don't have that kind of uh, attacking ability. Portugal 3. I I like 3-0. I'm going to go 3 3 or 4 nil. Bruno Fernandes masterclass. Yes, sir. <laughs> A little, little bias there. I think 2-1 Portugal. I'm with, I'm with any consolation goal at the end. Yeah, I'm going same exact score as Winks. It was in my head. I'm going to go 2-1 Portugal. But I think we're all 5-5 five for five here. Portugal's probably going to the same yep. Yep. Um, So now we will transition kind of based on what we just spoke about here with Morocco and Portugal. We'll transition on to the huge global disappointment of Spain getting knocked out in the round of 16 as much as it pains me to have to do this. Uh, but I do have a lot of thoughts and I was hoping that I could share my thoughts with you all. Yes, sir. Go for it. Just, all you just chat, you know, just, chat. Just, as Jamie Vardy says, let's chat shit, get banged, baby. You know what I mean? Just, um, just, bang. just go for it. Talk, talk, no, shit, to Mara- for talk it. shit to Morata talk for me. Talk do, it. Shit. <laughs> do it. You won't. You know, it's crazy. Something. Morata had three goals in this tournament. It's wild. Um, <laughs> I think, um, that I, I wrote down a lot of things because I've been thinking about a lot of things like with what we saw from the start when they seven nilled Costa Rica and they looked like this attacking powerhouse and they were just moving the ball unbelievably well in transition to tying Germany. Actually, I, I think letting the game slip. I think they let that one go. Yep, bottled. Then you lose to Japan. So I think they started here and it just slowly went here. And I think there's a multitude of things you need to talk about. Number one, let's talk about these. I think the the true, how do I phrase this? The true um, squad selection was, a light was kind of shined on the fact that choosing that many young players was a mistake. Mm. And when the moment arose, and the biggest moment arose, when you need experienced penalty takers, you need experienced heads, right? He brings on Sadabia for a minute, cold off the bench. He has Soler shoot it, who probably played 60 minutes the whole tournament. And then he has Busquets, who obviously you, you probably, we all probably would have had Busquets in there. Mm-hmm. Um, the squad selection here is where I'm, is where I, I'm upset. Sergio Ramos shoots, he scores. Iago Aspas, who has over 170 goals for Celta Vigo in the last eight seasons. He would shoot. Aspas is a dog. And he would have scored. <laughs> Gerard Moreno, who is had 23 goals, seven assists two years ago at Villarreal last season, 17 goals, eight assists. How is, this dude, how, is, how is this dude not on the plane? Don't know. Right? But he went with Nico Williams, who I think has potential, but he has a total of like four goals in his professional career. And he went with Ferran Torres and played him the yeah. whole time. Which he's... And I also think – I think that's the biggest outlier. Is like I just mentioned two guys who were in their early 30s who have banged in goals for a long time. And have experience and have the they understand how to how to play in those games and they're true strikers, right? Aspas is a, is a nine. Moreno's a nine. Marco Asensio was played as the striker every game and started. He's not a striker. 
This is not Spain of 2012 where Cesc Fabregas was your false nine. You can't get away with it because you don't have Xavi, Iniesta, Busquets, Pedro, Ramos, Xavi Alonso, David Silva. You don't have them anymore. Mm -hmm. And as, as highly as I rate some of these kids, like Pedro Gavi, they're phenomenal. Not having a true nine, like obviously Dove said it, right? Morata, Morata himself will not win you a World Cup. Okay. <laughs> um, Contrary to popular belief, because we all thought he was the guy. You know, we were all we were all. <laughs> he's high high. He's we, all we, goals, yeah, we, all, right? we all raved about him. He scored I will give goals. credit to Hen. He was the first guy at the the one we recorded live. He was like Spain with Morata. <laughs> And Fernand Torres, he's like, no, no shot. No yeah. shot. I, he went with the star power, dude. He picked the guys who everyone knows who aren't bad players. But you're right. No one knows who Diego Aspas is. Like, that guy's a dog. You're 100% right. They didn't have a nine. They didn't have guys that had experience. He went with youth and kids at Barcelona and kids at Real Madrid. And that's it. And they didn't have it. They didn't have it. Yeah. I just, Butch, Butch, what does this say? Uh, Luis Enrique. Yeah. Well, like, I, that's that's a genuine question because I still think he's a good coach, and I don't necessarily know that you adding those guys you've mentioned. Ramos, big difference in the back, but I don't necessarily know that you adding those guys to the front is going to make you beat a France, or it's going to make you beat a Brazil, or it's going to make you beat an England. I don't think that those three guys are like World Cup winners. Maybe they get by Morocco and pens, but I don't mm -hmm. think that necessarily wins them the World Cup. Mm. No, and I think that's a great point. I, I think, like, is it enough to win you the cup? Maybe not. But I just feel like, I don't know how to put it in doves. Like, obviously, me and you, we, we coach, you know, varsity soccer. Like, when we get to the biggest pressure moments. <laughs> plug. Just plug that in there. We're, sick, sick, sick. When we get to those pressure moments, doves, like, I'm looking at you, and we're putting our most experienced heads in the game, Right. We're rolling with the guys who have been there, done that, and the guys who are obviously performing at that high level, but they're, they have the experience. They know how to manage the game. They know what they're doing. They know what runs to make. They know where to position themselves, whatever it is, whatever position they play. I just feel like when you have a guy like Aspas and Moreno who've been, who, who are 30-something years old and have been a nine in professional football for 12, 13 years and have scored 200 goals, to, both of them over 200 goals in their club career, like they – they can produce something for you, some little moment of magic in the box or something, right? Playing Marco Asensio in a position that he's not comfortable in, asking him to be a vertical runner and run in behind consistently straight up the field from a nine position where he's used to playing as a right winger and making those runs inverted. You're asking him to run vertical. He's not going to do it. He did it one time and the ball did get to him in that game against Morocco and he hit it side net. He did. He made one of those runs that he got the ball from one. Yeah, I don't know. Enough. I just, I just feel like the squad selection was, and obviously like, I, I feel like Tiago should have been in, in that, in the team. I don't yeah. know that, that also just kind of blows my mind, but um, he, he, he had to get that Tiago comment in there. Yeah. Might as well. Yeah, I, don't I mean, on, to be fair, like I hate Liverpool and I was so shocked that he wasn't in it. Yeah, it wasn't like, wild. it wasn't like it was the Tiago of two seasons ago where he was like a ghost for the entire season. Like he came off of a good year. He's mm -hmm. been playing well this year. Like it was a weird omission. I me. think love Pedri. I love uh, Busquets. I think Tiago is double, if not triple the player that Gavi is. I think that mm -hmm. was unbelievable. I just think that Gavi and Pedri for playing at both Barcelona in the same midfield, like Gavi gets thrown in the Pedri conversation so much. And I think Pedri's levels above Gavi, yeah, but yeah, I just, I show. think they just get thrown in that conversation to where like, I, I don't know. I think Tiago's levels above him, Gavi and Pedri, in my opinion, but. You know, see, um, I think this, this, the way this has ended, this speaks volumes that Luis Enrique, I think he's a phenomenal uh, manager guys. Like his philosophy is fantastic. Like the way they play, it's it's beautiful. It's fun to watch, but you have to have the right pieces. Yeah. You have to have the right pieces in the right spots. Him not bringing a nine, it's not 2012. Like it didn't work, right? So they're out. They got they crashed out to a team that on paper they should not have have lost to. Not to mention the the same thing happened four years ago against Russia and and Pets. Um. 
I just think it's, it tells you that he got it wrong. I, I think that we he just has to kind of accept the fact, like, I got it wrong. I chose – maybe I chose a few players that should not have been here. The stage maybe was too big. They weren't ready yet. They're too young, whatever it is. You know what I mean? Like, I just think that that's the biggest piece of reflection is the squad selection over, like, the actual philosophy. And I think he played certain players in the wrong position, like Marco Asensio in the nine. He sh I agree with Henry. Fred Torres probably shouldn't have played as many minutes as he did. He didn't look very good. He has, he has, a, he has a lot of potential, but he didn't look very good. So like, you know, um, and obviously Sergio Ramos, if you have him on the field, you have that, he's a psycho dude. He's the yeah. biggest, he's the biggest leader I've ever seen. But like, he's, he's a total, like, you know, dickhead. He's a total dickhead, but he's a true captain, bro. If you have him in this team and he's on that field, he's, he's in your face getting you like look what he did against Atletico bro like he's Mr. Clutch yeah he'd be up playing the nine in the final 10 minutes of that game like he wouldn't yeah. even be playing center have, he'd be up yeah, there. You, you just have I, ju I just think there would have been a different mentality yeah I think there would have been a whole different mentality in the team if you bring him with you Busquets is not a leader that's going to be screaming at you you can't carry gonna... that weight like no he couldn't can't. be the guy to, to run all these kids. And I think he probably is a great leader. I'm sure you have, you go through that much Spanish experience, like that you just come with it, but I think you're hundred percent right. Yeah. Like Sergio Ramos is a leader on the field, off the field. And you'll hear him. Like yeah. sometimes for those kids, bro, you need that influence. hundred percent. And and I think that's the biggest thing guys. And, and you, you know, you could disagree. I don't know. I've just done a lot of thinking about it. I think Luis Enrique is a great coach. I really do. And I think he has a lot of he's, – he's, what, 50 years old? He's got a bright future. He's got more years in him. He'll get another job. Um, I just think it really came down to the fact that he chose – his squad selection was just wrong. I just think there were some players there that should have been there and some players that shouldn't have been there that were. So He's going he's gonna to take the I think, States I think, to a 2024 I think we all agree with you. Copa yeah. America. <laughs> Luis States, Enrique, baby. United States, Copa America 2024. Tyler Adams in Bro, the pivot. Here we go. Watch out. Bro, you want to you want to know something nuts? Like I was sitting there like in class that day and, um, you know, like 100 kids ran by my room taunting me after the game was over, by the way. Um, I'm not kidding you, like running in Morocco, Morocco, Morocco. I was like, <laughs> I was like dude, you guys are just you get out of here, man. Um, but this kid who Dobes and I coach, he, he walks in and he goes, coach, my mom just texted me and said, you look like Luis Enrique's twin. <laughs> and I started dying, bro. Cause I'm like, I'm like, all my buddies have been saying that for like five years. And yeah, dude. The fact that your mom said that, I'm like, this is this is hilarious. He's just way better looking. He, he yeah. is Let's way better looking, bro. He's got he's got this silver hair, man. Let's wrap um, on that. So we're gonna end on that with um with the Spain talk, but I think uh we covered a lot of great points. Um for time's sake, we are going to um make this factor cap very quick very Let's very do quick. It. just Let's a do it. run a simple no yeah. explanation just factor cap just a, just a simple fact or cap guys um and i had to come up with this one kind of on the spot but i just think it'd be a good one uh killian mbappe is your is your next ballon d'or winner fact i'm talking the next edition of the ballon d'or he's going to win it based on what we've seen in this world cup Cat. Okay. Cat. <laughs> Dobes is thinking. Look, he's got a little grin on his face. Bro. I had to think too, bro. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say a close cap. Cap cappuccino. Cappuccino. Large, large cappuccino. Ooh. Because I think, I think he's the best player in the world. <laughs> <laughs> We said we said no explanations, but I think you got to win trophies and win in the French league doesn't mean anything to me. I don't think they win the World Cup, and I don't think that PSG wins the Champions League. That's a good right. shout. It's a good shout. But what about you, bud? I think it's I think it's a fact. I think I could see it. You know, like I don't know. I think it really it really depends. Like if he gets them in the final, if he gets them in the final, and let's say like Messi's not there. Neymar hasn't done enough in this World Cup to warrant the fact that he carried them there, right? Um, but yeah, I think it. I think it could be. Could It'll be close. Uh, yeah, hey, let's hey. rip this. Mega fans, thanks for joining us tonight on this latest edition of our 
uh, our Mecca Banner podcast covering the World Cup quarterfinals that start tomorrow. As always, follow us on the socials, Instagram, Twitter, and our TikToks popping off. Popping out. <laughs> All, right. All right. Cheers, fellas. Well done. Yeah, lads. All right. Bye. Peace, fellas.